So The Sims 4 has been out for almost a year now, and while it's seen a lot of changes and updates, some of which have quashed many of the complaints players had, there's still a long way to go if the game is going to live up to its full potential. So today, we're going to take a look at the state of The Sims 4. The Sims 4 is a life simulation, and the slogan for the game is Play With Life. But I can't help but notice some things that are missing from the game that were either in previous Sims titles or could easily be added to make the game better. So I figured we'd have a look at some of the biggest problems or shortfalls with The Sims 4 and have a think about how they could be fixed. First up, we have loading screens. Now it's no mystery that I love the open world idea of The Sims 3 and that I was very disappointed when The Sims 4 had no open world. Over time though, I've grown to like the idea of having a bunch of different neighbourhoods filled with people. It makes the world feel more alive and I love that. So I'm okay with having loading screens between neighbourhoods. It gives the game time to load in all the sims and make the world feel lived in and alive. What I don't love, however, is loading screens within neighbourhoods. It's just not good enough. Come on Sim Studio, it's 2015, we do not need loading screens between houses. I honestly don't know why we actually have loading screens between lots that are in the same neighbourhood. What makes it even stranger is the fact that if you actually go and have a look at the houses within that neighbourhood, all the textures on the house are full resolution. The furniture on the inside is loaded, textures and all. So what the bloody hell are they loading? I honestly don't know. Whatever the reason may be, it's still not good enough. And don't go telling us it can't be done without loading screens. I'm just gonna cite SimCity 2013. No, 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 it can't be played offline at all. It's not possible. The game is built on online play. It cannot be changed. One year later, we got offline play. If they can change, and I quote, what the game is built on, then I think we can get rid of some loading screens. Come on, Sim Studio. We can do it. Next up, children and families. Now, obviously toddlers are missing from The Sims 4 base game, but that's not the only problem I have with families inside of The Sims 4. My problem is that there's just nothing to do. There's no incentive, really, to settle down and have a family, start that new phase of your life. Let's start with babies. Sim Studio, I have no idea how you managed to make babies more boring than they were in The Sims 3, but you did it. <laughs> how is it possible? Sims 4 babies just live out of their crib, and that's it, or bassinet, whatever the hell you want to call it. Go back to Sims 2 babies, they had legs unlike The Sims 3 and could be picked up and carried around and handed to other Sims to say hi, you could change them on changing tables, bathe them and feed them with bottles out of the fridge, so why are we going back to Sims 1 babies? Even The Sims 3 babies were better, you could take them out for strolls in the stroller and you could actually move them around, and if you had the content, you could put them in those little swing about things. swing about things? Yeah, why not? Uh, they were just kind of fun. Then there's the toddlers, or lack thereof. I actually kind of like toddlers in The Sims 3. They were cute, if not slightly creepy, and they gave your Sims something to do. Uh, playing with them, teaching them to walk and talk, feeding them in high chairs and reading to them, and it was just fun. They were just fun. There's none of that in The Sims 4, because we have no toddlers. And kids in The Sims 4, they have nothing to do. They can't play catch with their parents or friends. They can't play tag or do after-school activities. I used to love it in The Sims 3 when they could sit down and play peekaboo or read to their little brother or sister when they were a toddler. It was so cute. But now it's just school, homework, eat, sleep, repeat. Not exactly huge fun. I mean, hopefully we'll see a Sims 4 Generation expansion pack and things will be fixed a little bit, but that remains to be seen. And I guess that brings us nicely into my next gripe, depth. Overall, I personally find The Sims 4 to be a rather shallow experience, when just playing it normally at least. If you're not doing challenges that give you a set goal, there's no real incentive to keep playing the game. For me at least, I just find myself being bored after 45 minutes of playing. Which sucks because I don't want to play it, there's just nothing to keep me interested, no reason to keep playing. So why is that? Well I think it has a lot to do with the world. 
Because, while I, like I said, I don't mind the lack of open world in The Sims 4, it still takes away a huge part of the game. Just exploring. In The Sims 3, you could have your sim travel across a huge map with dozens, if not hundreds of lots, all the way across it. There were subways and taxis and you could drive from the hills of Bridgeport all the way down to Wayland's Haunt for a drink, or you could do that on the subway. You could go trekking through the woods to get to that quiet little pond at the back of Sunset Valley where your sims would propose to the loved ones under the light of the moon. There's none of that adventure in The Sims 4. You just kind of teleport from A to B and you get a loading screen in between that. We just sort of stuck as well in this terrifying dome with fake clouds and 2D trees floating in an infinite abyss. Which is honestly kind of creepy. The gathering of collectibles isn't as fun either. And still a lot to do with the world. You could go searching across the map to find enough gems to complete an opportunity which would get you that big promotion and give you a fat paycheck at the same time. But in Sims 4 there's none of that. And I miss it. I also mentioned opportunities there as well. While they were annoying for the most part, at least they were something to do, and in The Sims 4 I think we could really use them. And they could actually be beneficial to your Sims. They're just not there. And on top of all that, I just don't get the feeling that I did when I played The Sims 3. It might just be the nostalgia somewhat clouding my memory of it, but I, there's definitely something there that kept me playing for over 2,000 hours, if not 3,000 hours. Sims 4 needs that feeling. I don't know what it is, but it really needs it. It just doesn't. Yet. Alright, you all knew it was coming. One of the biggest problems with The Sims 4 is, of course, EA. And whatever the hell their business model is for Sims titles. One of the big things I've noticed about The Sims 4 and its expansions, content packs, game packs, and whatever the hell else has been released in order to steal your money, is that it's expensive. Really bloody expensive. What happened to 60 bucks for a base game, 30 bucks for an expansion, and 10 bucks for a little content pack? That was reasonable. I don't know where it went. Now you spend 80 bucks on the base game, 90 bucks if you want the digital deluxe, 50 bucks for an expansion, 30 bucks for a spa or some tents if you want to get those little, what are they called, game packs? I don't even know. And those, like the spas and tents, they're not in the same pack. They're separate. And then if you really, really want to throw away your hard-earned cash, you can spend 15 bucks on some outdoor tables, 15 bucks on some kitchen cabinets, and another 50 bucks on some fancy party clothes and neon furniture. EA. No. I don't know what goes on behind the scenes at EA, but for Christ's sake, people, think about your target audience when setting your prices. Let's think about it. A fair whack of your player base is under the age of 18, which means they're either going to be using their parents' money if they're younger, uh, their own pocket money, or the money they earn from their afternoon job at Macca's. It's basic marketing. Think about your target audience and set your prices accordingly. God damn. If you drop the prices to a reasonable level, then I'll buy. 30 bucks for an expansion, 19.99 for a game pack, and 9.99 for a stuff pack. Fine, I'll, I'll buy it. But let's look at the amount of money they want us to pay for The Sims 4 and all of its content at current prices. If we add up the digital deluxe base game and all the packs that are released or will be released this year, you're looking at $295 in the first year of The Sims 4 being released, or the first 13 months, let's say, which is basically a year, assuming you buy them at launch, of course. If you extend that over the expected lifespan of the game, which based on past Sims titles, it's about five years, just for a round number. EA are expecting us to fork out one and a half thousand dollars. One and a half grand. I'm just gonna pause for a minute to let that sink in. It is just shy of one thousand five hundred dollars. For that sort of money, you'd better hope I get about 60,000 hours out of the game and it better make my coffee in the morning. Because that is freaking ridiculous. I'm sorry for the language. It's actually properly fucking ridiculous. I don't know who they think they are, but they can go get... Yeah, you get the point. Okay, okay, so I've picked on, pulled apart, and overall been pretty critical of The Sims 4. 
So to finish up, I figured we should take a look at some of the best things about the game, because there are some good things about the game. Firstly, it is gorgeous. I love the art style, it's beautiful. Visually at least, it's a bloody top-notch game. The sims are beautiful looking, the colours are spot on, and on top of all that it runs like a dream. It's maxing my 60Hz monitor all the time, even when recording there's no stuttering and no lag like there was in The Sims 3, which was, as we know, a lag fest. Secondly, it's beautifully animated. The sims look really lifelike when they move. Uh, but they're still slightly cartoony. All animations are smooth and the pathing is excellent. There's no sims getting stuck on each other going through a door and it just seems right. Everything's sort of fluid and smooth and I love it. Kudos to the animators. And lastly, the interactions and relationships between sims, is, it's better than it's ever been. You can have people sitting at a lounge chatting and someone across the room cooking everyone dinner can be joining in the conversation. It's awesome. It's... and that's the overall feeling of the game. It's just a, a stress-free experience. You turn it on and play. There's no lag, no stuttering, no problems, no glitches spoiling the game. It's just... easy. And I guess that brings us nicely into the conclusion. The Sims 4 is... a good game. It's smooth and simple. But that's also its downfall. It's too simple. It's too bare. Trying to be smooth and fluid has caused it to omit certain features that make the games... that have come before it so good. It's just missing a couple of key things. It also really doesn't help that it's that expensive. Which isn't so much of a problem for me, except for my unwillingness to violate my principles purely to prove a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it does alienate a large number of players that can't afford the massive price tag of all the game and its extra content. For God's sake, EA, please drop your prices. The Sims 4 is so close to being a great game. It just needs a little more in the way of content or a little less in the way of cost, and it will be spot on. But that does it for the video. Let me know what you guys think. Do you disagree with me and think The Sims 4 is fine as it is? If so, you're wrong, but that's fine. Or do you think it needs something more? If it's the latter, let me know what you'd like to see in the game. And to any of the pretty awesome devs who work on the game, I know I'm critical of it, but that's only because I want it to be perfect. I think you guys have done a great job and I thank you for it. And to any EA marketing douchebags watching, if you drop the prices now, that will be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will scold you. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. And until then, as always, stay awesome.